This is WLS. Can you hear us, International Space Station? And we sure can. Welcome to the International Space Station. Oh, that is so cool. Uh, literally, on the Super Celebrity Satellite, we have astronauts Michael Hopkins and Rick Mastracchio from the International Space Station. How many miles above us are you, gentlemen? We're uh, 260 miles above the Earth right now. 160 miles above the Earth. And now, the interesting thing, I think a lot of uh, Chicagoans and people from Illinois, uh, especially University of Illinois grads, will remember that uh, Michael Hopkins, now a uh, United States Air Force colonel and obviously an astronaut on the space station, was a defensive back for the fighting Illini. And they were just talking about you. I think you didn't you do a, a hit from space during one of their football games this fall? Yeah, I had an opportunity actually to, to send quite a few messages down to the team uh, during the season, and it was absolutely great uh, to to be able to communicate with them like that, and actually enjoyed uh, watching a lot of the games on the weekends. Getting up there, Michael. Yeah, I'm sorry, I missed the last question. How long have you guys been up there? Yeah, um, I've actually been up here a little over uh, five months now, and I only have a couple weeks left. Uh, Rick and Koichi, our other crewmates uh, here in the USOS segment, they've been up here about uh, three months now, I think. And what would you say, and this is for either of you, uh, what would you say is the hardest part of getting adjusted to microgravity? Well, you know, when you get up here, the body goes through quite a few changes. Uh, you get this uh, fluid shift to your head, so you get kind of a puffy head and before your body adjusts for that. Uh, of course, uh, just getting uh, used to the uh, zero G, your vestibular system, takes a, a few days. Uh, I would probably say that uh, the vestibular system is probably the worst to, to get used to. So you, you sort of feel as though you're seasick the whole time. Would that be the best way to describe that? Yeah, a little bit, just for a, just for a few hours. Some folks, it takes a few days. Some folks, only a few hours to adjust. But, uh, yeah, that's that's probably a good analogy. So uh, I guess now, Michael, you're, you're on your way back down in a couple of weeks, and you're going to take the Soyuz down and land in Kazakhstan. It's part of the uh, – that's how people are now transiting back and forth to the ISS. Uh, is it something that you're going to miss? You're looking forward to coming back to Earth? Where are your emotions here? Yes, all of the above. Um, I'm certainly going to miss being up here, being here with uh, Rick and Koichi and our Russian colleagues and uh, the ability to, to do all the work up here in microgravity, work with the teams on the ground. It's absolutely fantastic. On the other hand, I've, I've been up here a while, and it's, it's time to go home and see the family uh, start being a husband and a dad again. I imagine solid food is probably a good uh, addition to your life, too, right? I mean, if you don't want to go down and, like, eat normally. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, some fresh produce, uh, probably have some pizza somewhere in there, and, and maybe even a good uh, Chicago-style hot dog. <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good right now, and I'm not even in space. All right, so uh, as, you're, uh, as you're there, a couple weeks ago, you guys had to go out and do some extravehicular activity, do a spacewalk, uh, looking to make sure that everything was, was working properly, had a little bit of a of an issue up there. Walk us through a little bit of what that's like when, you, when, the, when the red lights start going on and you realize uh, there may be a problem on board the space station. And I know down here in the press, there was a lot of speculation that you guys might actually have to uh, abandon the space station for a while. It turns out, I don't think you guys ever thought that was going to happen. But, but what was that like in those first few moments or even days when you guys were trying to work that problem? Yeah, the way the system works up here is when there's a failure of some kind, we have a computer system that uh, that turns on an audible alarm, obviously, and we get yellow and red indicators uh, on our panels. And when we hear the alarm, we go and we check the computer to see what's going on. Very often, we'll get these alarms, or not very often, once in a while we'll get these alarms and the ground will say, oh, that's uh, just a sensor problem or it's just a don't worry about it, we'll take care of it. And that's kind of how this one was, was the ground call us at first and said, no action on your part, we're looking into it. So at first I thought it was just a minor issue or just a, no, no big deal. But then as the hours went past and the days 
a couple of days later, or within a day or so, we started getting rumblings that they're having problems with the cooling system. And that's when we started to think, okay, they're, their ground is trying to fix it, and if they can't fix it, spacewalk is going to be the option to go out and replace some parts. And that's when it started to get serious. So walk us through that moment where you're getting all strapped up, ready to go, and get out there. And you're, it, I mean, obviously, any time you're doing that, it's, it's, is it exhilarating? Is it scary? What? I mean, obviously, you're well trained, so scary is sort of a relative term here. But is, do you have that sort of that that tension when you're going out because you realize, hey, I'm in space and I got to fix this thing? Yeah, actually, again, I'm going to answer all of the above. Um, you know, one of the one I. Playing football at Illinois, one of the things I found the worst parts of the game was waiting for the game to start. And I would say uh, here in, in doing the spacewalk was kind of the same thing. It takes a while for us to, to get to the point where we actually open the hatch and go out the door. And, and that waiting is, is, can be very difficult. And that's when the emotions start to build up, all of the excitement, the, the intensity, the nervousness. It all just starts to churn. And then finally, when you get out the hatch and you're able just to start doing your job, everything starts to flow. Uh, what did you say in these uh, last several months that you guys have been up there? What's the most important experiment or, or program that you're working on up there? It's hard to pick uh, one important, the, the most important uh, science or the most important research project that's going on up here. Uh, you know, we've got a wide, a wider variety of different types of research. One of the most interesting for me, I thought, is uh, we're doing some uh, research on vaccines and how uh, we're trying to develop new vaccines for new, uh, for uh, these, you know, super, uh, super bacteria that uh, are starting to pop up around the earth. So it's not just to help the folks up here, uh, but it's also to help the folks on the ground. So I think that's the kind of thing that I think is important for us to do up here are things that not only help the uh, space. Uh, space travelers, but also help the folks back on Earth. What would you say is the coolest thing that you fly over on any given day? What feature of Earth is it that, that gets your attention every time? Well, that's a, that's a tough question because there are so many amazing things to see on Earth. Uh, how about if I say Chicago? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, one of my favorite... <laughs> One of my favorites is uh, every time we fly over the Caribbean and you see just these incredible blue waters around the islands, it, it truly is stunning. But, but again, there are so many different uh, uh, things that we fly over that are, that are just truly incredible. How many times a day are you orbiting the Earth? Yeah, we orbit the Earth uh, every 90 minutes, so 16 times a day we go around the Earth. Uh, gentlemen, we thank you so much for your time. Just get an idea of where, where do you think NASA's future is going here? Do you think there'll be more long-term duration kinds of flights like you guys are doing or Mars? What do you think is next for the agency? Well, in the near term, we have, uh, of course, many missions that are going to be five to six months long, and we're also going to start doing uh, one-year missions. We're going to send folks up here and stay up here for about a year. And that's a prerequisite to going on to uh, asteroid, moon, or Mars, and things like that. You know, we need to learn how the body, how to uh, keep the, per the uh, astronauts healthy in these long periods of time. Of course, uh, NASA is building a new vehicle called the Orion, and that vehicle is going to go beyond low Earth orbit to these other destinations like the moon, asteroids, and Mars. So uh, NASA has a bright future. It may take some time to get to these places, but uh, we continue to push in that direction. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Good luck up there. And, uh, uh, Michael, call us when you get back to Earth. I'll, bu I'll buy your hot dog and your pizza, whatever you need, sir. <laughs> Sounds like a deal. Thanks. <laughs> that is them. The International Space Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.